Welcome to Women Winning Divorce. I am your host, Heather Quick. I'm an attorney, entrepreneur, author, and founder of Florida Women's Law Group, the only divorce firm for women by women. I love thinking big, thinking outside the box, creating creative solutions for women, and empowering women to win in all aspects of their life. In each episode of this show, I will discuss how to navigate the divorce process, come out stronger and empowered on the other side. Welcome to Women Winning Divorce. Each week, we discuss issues including divorce, custody, alimony, paternity, narcissism, mediation, and other family law issues. Provide insight on the journey of women winning divorce. I'm Heather Quick, owner and attorney of Florida Women's Law Group. Today, I'm being joined by Kristen Marcroft, managing co-partner and attorney of Freed Marcroft in Connecticut. Welcome to the show, Kristen. Hi, Heather. Thanks so much for having me. Absolutely. It's such a pleasure. And last episode, we had the opportunity to talk with your partner, Megan. And I'm so excited to have the other half of Marcroft and Freed on the show today. (laughs) Happy to be here. Well, good. So this is always my opening question, Kristen, as far as helping our listeners get to know you a little bit, but tell us a little bit about what has drawn you to family law and what keeps you there. So I would say that um, over the the, sort of the life of our firm, which is about a little over 10 years now, um, I would say family law found us more than we found it. You know, we started as a general practice um, doing a little bit of this, a little bit of that as, as, as firms so often do, uh, you know, particularly when they're young. Um, and we knew pretty early on that if we wanted to, to grow, we'd have to get really good at one thing. Um, and we really, uh, Megan and I didn't even really have much of a conversation about it. We both knew what the one thing was, um, and then it was family law. And I think, I don't know, it's an iPad. I'm just iPad. I'm gonna let it go. Um, I think that, um, it, for, I, we have I, probably some of the same reasons, you know, for Megan, Megan has personal experience with divorce. And then so has feelings ab- about how that it was, it, it was a, ultimately a, a very positive thing in her life um, in that now she and I are married. And uh, for me, I don't have any personal experience with divorce. Uh, my parents never divorced or really isn't in, in, you know, in the course of my life throughout my family there, there really isn't any divorce. Arguably there probably should have been one or two. Um, <laughs> but for me, I think the, the attraction to it was just the, um, that it's not transactional, that it's the, the people part of it. Um, and at the end of the day, for me, what is, is really motivating to me, what gets me out of bed, um, thinking about it and, and working in this, in this practice area is really, um, I think of it as a transformation. Um, the, you know, the, those times, that, you know, they don't all go that way, but those, you know, those, those moments with clients where you just can see them um, changing and getting, getting through something really, really hard that like, in, you know, a 201, nobody wanted, right? No one, no one, no one got married expecting um, that they were going to get divorced. Uh, but then, then there's these moments where, where, where people, you, you just see them like start to see a future, a different, you know, a better future. And that, um, that I do have experience with in the course of my life, going through something, you know, hard, challenging that I, I never saw happening, um, never would have chosen. And, and then sort of looking back on it now and, and being grateful for a lot of the hard pieces of it, because I know they're um, responsible for getting me where I am now, which is pretty great. Um, so really, it's, if I had to boil it down to one word, that's it. It's, it's the transformation. Which is so wonderful. And I think that is really when, when you love family law, like, our, like we both do in our firm, it's because it's not just a transaction. Right. We love the people. We love to see what the people go through. And we know how much we can impact yep. what their ultimate outcome is. Because right. there's so much that having great lawyers who care about you can do right. for you in a divorce. Yep. Um, it, you know, Not all cases quite doesn't matter as much, I think. Yeah. Um, because the more you're willing to listen, the yeah. more creative and the more you can really help people to that better future. So I love that about your firm because too many family law attorneys don't love it. But we're not talking, we don't talk to them. Much. No, we we don't. Talk to oh, they're not our kind, dear. Yeah, that's right. That is right. <laughs> now in this episode, this, what we are going to talk about, which I think is going to be great conversation and um, to get your take on it, but the shame and guilt that so mm-hmm. often women feel after the end of a marriage or right. The beginning of divorce, basically knowing this is where they're going. And what's been your experience in seeing, you know, women going through these emotions during their divorce? Yeah, I mean, I think there 
rarely are they not both present at least on you know on some level or at some point during um leading up to the divorce during the divorce after the divorce um and you know i think that i think that so often that divorce is sort of perceived as as a you know as a as a failure uh, you know, the ending of something. And, you know, like, as I said earlier, that, you know, it's not something people were thinking about when they were getting married and not something they were, you know, saw, saw, saw their, saw their lives um, becoming. And so there's, I think there's, there's just those, both, both of those emotions, guilt and shame, guilt for um, whatever, you know, they perceive as their roles in, in the breakdown of the marriage, um, shame for the same, for really for the same reasons, how, the, how they're perceived by their family, their kids, their communities. Um, and, uh, you know, at the end of the day, we work really hard to try to, um, you know, honor both of those emotions because they're real, but to just get people get out, to get people out of the shame um, mindset, because there's just, there's just no, there's no moving forward in it. It's really just limiting. Uh, whereas guilt, you know, guilt soften is just, we, we all experience it and it, it too can be limiting, but at the end of the day, it's, it's a, it's really just about taking responsibility for, we, we say for your hundred percent, not 50%. We always talk about relationships in terms of being responsible for, for your hundred percent. And the other person was, is responsible for their 100%. And you can feel guilty about maybe things that you would have done differently or um, said differently. Um, but then at the end of the day, taking responsibility for that, forgiving yourself for that, and then moving on, um, as opposed to shame, which is just like a uh, place that you can really spend a whole lot of your life in, and it's just doesn't get anybody anywhere. Um, yeah, I think that is such a great way to <clears throat> explain it and really make the difference in the two. And, mm -hmm. you know, I, I don't know, I think that when we talk about divorce, a lot of it is still taboo. And yeah. there is that, well, somebody failed. Like who, what did he do? Right. What did you do? Right. Yep. And versus openly, it's okay to talk about mental health struggles, even emotional yep. issues. And nobody's asking whose fault it was, but right. what do you think about that? I mean, I think that there is still a fear of judgment yeah. when saying I'm getting divorced. Yeah, I think that's absolutely true. I think, you know, again, it's, it's, it's historically been perceived as a failure. It's not certainly not something to bet to, you know, that has historically been applauded or, or recognized as, as really being the, in my opinion, the courageous um, act that it is. And, you know, and sometimes there, there are so often the issues that you, that you mentioned, mental health issues and, and all sorts of, you know, things like that. But at the end of the day, sometimes people just also grow apart you know, they, they change. And sometimes people, whether they, you know, got married young um, or, or didn't and, and had kids or didn't, it just, it, it, sometimes people just fundamentally grow apart. And at the end of the day, you know, we only, this is it. We only get this one life. So that just, it, to, to me, people choosing that they're going to be happy in this one life, including if that means ending um, the, the marriage that they're in, uh, that to me is a, is, a, is about the most courageous act um, that a person can do, and and I and I also think that it's um, particularly for parents showing that courage to their kids. Um, at the end of the day, to me, if they're, if people care about there being less divorce, I, I don't know a better way to do it than for people who are unhappy to decide to move on into something more happy and show their kids that that you that there's there's uh there's courage in choosing your own happiness and there's courage in deciding that there's a certain kind of relationship that you're going to uh accept and then there's a certain kind of relationship that you're not going to accept and it doesn't have to be um it doesn't have to be cast in this negative light as i think it historically has been whether they're you know whether they're mental health issues or it's just like i said just we, we once were happy and we're just not now mm -hmm. and i think you know back to what you talked about at the beginning and, and why this is the, you know, area of law for you is the, you know, transformation because yeah. sometimes I think, I think it's just more than happy, but it's easy to say, Hey, happy, but it's really, are you really living your full potential yeah. when you're not, you're depriving yeah. everybody else of what you're capable of, including your right. children. If, if you are not fully who you should be yep. and you're staying in the marriage because you think, well, I have to stick it out. You know, I, I yeah. owe it to everybody, but then you haven't helped anybody because you're no. not this fully 
you know, present human who right. is giving, you know, everything they've got to the people around them to maybe, you know, their, their occupation or just whatever mm-hmm. it is. Because I think when you are in this place of a bad marriage, yeah. there's just very little you can do for yourself, for yourself or anybody else. Right. Really. It can, can be all consuming. Yeah. It, yeah. It, it certainly can be all consuming. It's just, it's sort of like, you know, almost living like a, a, a fake life. And that takes a lot of energy um, to be out in the world pretending something is other than what it truly is. And I like the way that you said that. I think at the end of the day, yeah, you're it's diminishing yourself and depriving the world of who you really are and, and then, and more importantly, could be. And, you know, I think that it's the failure mm-hmm. that is what people perceive as so yeah. bad. And, yeah. um, and they're so afraid of it. And yeah, but I mean, it takes, you know, it takes two to make it and it takes two to break it. Right. Yeah. So it's like, at least, yeah, like you said, you know, it's, it's your, yeah, it takes your hundred percent, but for your part, but it's not all you, it, it just can't right. be it's impossible no. to be all one person's fault. Right. And, and even that I think can be hard when, um, you're the spouse who doesn't want the divorce and mm-hmm. you're like, but he's cheating. And, right. you know, I think we've both had those clients in the past and I get it. And I, I mean, I don't, you know, I'm not a mental health counselor and mm-hmm. working through it, it but it, I know there's pain there and I see more often than not women get to the point by the end or even maybe years later where they say, I can see now Yeah. where they may not say I have played a part, but like that they yeah. at least acknowledge that right. that marriage didn't succeed for both mm-hmm. of them. Um, mm-hmm. And which is a great sense of growth for anybody yeah. because, you know, otherwise they're like, why fail? Like he went and, you know, he cheated on me. Yeah. So I must yeah. not be a very good wife, right? Right, or, right. Um, you know, uh, good cook or all these other things that, yeah, that right. cause them to leave, but it usually has to do more about them on right. leaving. You have to separate yourself from the shame as if yep one is you if you go an explanation um, mm-hmm. maybe not even your your children are they're just part of your life so you're gonna have to have a yeah. dialogue and talk about yep. it but it's not maybe it, the word is people are looking for something to justify it and when you yeah. don't feel like you found anything to justify it you feel guilty right and and I, I think at the end of the day too, and this is, I mean, this is certainly true in divorce, but I think just in, just in life, I think that when we do exactly what you said, look, look at the things that happen in our lives and the good, the bad, the ugly. And, and, and in this case, probably most, especially the bad and the ugly. And even sometimes when there's, even if there's cheating or, you know, whatever the case may be, where it feels like there is occasion to try to assign blame, even in those instances, if, if the person to whom those things happen to finds a way to take responsibility for whatever their role may have been. And it could be, it could be something they didn't do. It could, it could be just, um, you know, tolerating, uh, a relationship that was less than, um, really what they, they wanted or thought they thought they had, you know, gotten into it's, it's taking responsibility for whatever your role is, even in the thing that maybe you felt like a victim in it is empowering. And it doesn't mean, it doesn't justify what whatever the behavior may have been, cheating or whatever the case may be, but it's empowering to, to understand like, oh, I did, I, I probably did play a role in how this ended, even if there were things that happened to me that I, I don't think I would have done to somebody else. It's empowering to just take responsibility for it rather than live in, why did this happen to me? I didn't deserve that. Those things can still be true, but, but hanging out there is just, a, just a recipe for, for just a, a, another way of diminishing yourself and the life that you could be leading. Agreed. Now, let me ask you this. If you, you know, just what your express, your perception is and experience, um, since we represent women only, obviously yep. we have a one-sided mm-hmm. view on that, but you know, we, right. You know, I, I believe, and I've kind of seen this play out a little bit, and women maybe tend to feel more responsible for the relationship in many mm-hmm. cases. And so then sometimes maybe that leads them taking more of the blame or accepting yeah. 
failures that their husband may push on them. Yeah, I mean, you, you know, as you said, we we do we represent both men and women. Um, but I agree with you. I think there's just they're just sort of fundamental differences in the way that that women move through the world than in the, than the way that men move through the world. And I do think that um, that women tend to shoulder more of the, or be maybe more like introspective, like, what did I do? How did I, yeah, how did I fail here? What could I have done differently? And, um, you know, why, why is this happening to me? And how could I have done better? I, I do think there's just a different sort of, um, like I said, dis, di, different way of moving through the world that we, we, we do represent both, but I, I agree with you. Uh, we see that in our practice as well. Yeah. And I think it's just, you know, part of, and, and a lot of times within the podcast, we're just giving information, not only to the women listening, but also like, hey, you're not alone, right? No. These are feelings that, um, you know, we've seen that our clients have. And one of the, one of the greatest things and we had this come up actually in a big firm meeting um, with some initiatives that we're doing, but one of our, one of my attorneys said, you know, our clients can't always we wish we had the the lens of how they were at the beginning of mm. this process and then to see themselves now because it's right. very easy for us to see this transformation, see yep, right. how overwhelmed they are with this decision. And even if they want it, sometimes they feel guilty. Sometimes they feel more yep. guilty if they want it. Yeah, like, I think, yeah, often, right. You know, and and so that it that weighs on them because those are heavy mm -hmm. emotions that, mm -hmm. like you said, aren't really productive. But then, as they can begin to come out of that and see that future, yep. they have totally transformed, and they've been able to let that go. To some extent. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, I think. I, yeah, I think that, and and I think you're you're exactly right that more often than not, if it if it's the if it's the the woman choosing the divorce, there's just frequently more guilt um that maybe even more than frequently maybe every time uh for for making that decision and i you know it's i think you know we i'm not suggesting that men don't think inwardly or or, or you know what could i have done differently but i think with women um you know look they're still holding up the world that's just yeah. Yeah, just the truth. <laughs> just, I don't know. You know, I don't I, I like uh, fight me on that one. Yeah. Like, let's go because it's just it's just the truth. I mean, we uh, our our firm represents men and women, but men, men and women, we are predom predominantly comprised of women um, and sort of just it's just kind of like what's happened over the years. Like it's our just just not by design. It's just um, it's just what happened. So and, and a lot of our women are. Um, our moms, so they're working moms, and they're just still, you know, even during COVID, it's it, it, and and when the schools open and then it's closing all of a sudden, they don't call dad to come pick the you know kid up. They don't call they don't call or you know the nurse doesn't call dad. The nurse calls mom, even when they're both have full time jobs, careers, whatever the case may be. It's just there's just the reality that women are holding up the world and the expectations on on women placed on them by the world. Um, never mind the expectations that they place on themselves. Uh, are are vastly different, and in my opinion, um, more <laughs> than 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 is placed on men. I just that's just you know again, fight me on it. <laughs> well, you are. Anyway, I know you won't. You know you know won't. But uh, yeah. anyway, um, especially not on women winning divorce, right? We're definitely talking right. about that. But let's yeah, take this quick it's just break. the truth. And when we come back, we're going to talk a little bit more and how the board closet changed. Welcome back for the second segment of the show. We are here today with Kristen Marcroft from Free Hello again. Marcroft in Connecticut. And we've been talking about, you know, divorce and shame in a divorce and maybe some mm -hmm. about what's the difference and the way that women in our experience tend to shoulder some of these feelings. And, um, you know, I think a little bit of that, which we touched on, as we were going to break, but that a woman's nature leads her to take on all the responsibility sometimes. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, like you said earlier, sometimes, you know, that's expectations of the world, but then sometimes we, we have to own it. We want to yeah. kind of 
try to be in many control of everything, which is not right. true, but because there's so little we control. However, with that comes that responsibility. And then also the family, because you know, women mm-hmm. are definitely relational and there's a yep. lot of that. When there's a divorce, it, it, it affects everybody. Yep. Um, yeah, it affects now, their own family and their friends and their extended family. And it, yeah, it's it's the tentacles are very far reaching. And they are. And, you know, many times it, it there. Well, there is a loss. Sometimes it's a, um, you know, sometimes maybe it's, it's a little bit more welcome than others. But mm-hmm. to have a whole ton of in-laws and many yeah. times those relationships are particularly in a longer term marriage. Yeah. Those are solid relationships that yep. it can be difficult to navigate after right. the divorce. And there can then be blame mm-hmm. from that family on you. Um, you know, because I think it's true. We both know nobody knows what goes on inside a relationship, right? Yeah. They right. look one way on the outside. And yeah. And then, there, know, and then there's the truth. Yeah. And there's the truth. <laughs> and, yep. and so I do think because. Families get hurt or they're sad, but they, they can mm-hmm. have a lot of judgment. Um, yeah. And a lot because they are, they don't really understand, but yet you can be really in a position where you feel as though they're, you know, there's all kind of family blaming you yeah. as the yep. woman. So talking about this from the woman's perspective. Um, yeah. And how to deal with that. Right. I mean, you know, there's just a reality to, However, whatever your personal journey is, whatever work you may have done on yourself, how, however it evolves, um, you, you, you are, have been, you know, wherever you are in the process that you're going through, you, you can't, um, you can't also bring other people with you, right? So like, as particularly when you're talking about in-laws, you're, so you're talking about a whole other generation and then they've got all their, you know, whatever, whatever they're bringing to the table in terms of how they perceive marriage, how they perceive divorce. Um, and, and, and frequently as you know, when you're talking about divorce, often the notion that like, you shouldn't do it, you know, it's, it's, it sort of comes down to like, try harder. I wasn't happy either, but I stuck it out and it's kind of, yes, you, oh, I think that's yeah, right. And I, especially for, for women. And, you know, I think often, I think women are the very best cheerleaders for other women, but I think often they're also, they also can be the very worst. And, you know, it's, it's, it's like, you got to find a way to sort of protect your own, your own peace and, and understand, like, to your point, some of those relationships are going to survive and some of them aren't. And, you know, and I agree with you, particularly in a long, in a long marriage, it's, it's not just the marriage. That's the loss. There's so much, there's, there's so much collateral damage that can be a part of it. Um, And I don't know that you can prepare for that. um, Just apart from, recognizing that at the end of the day, you can't bring everyone with you. And there so often when there's, if there's, you know, blame coming at you from, um, from those relationships, it's really at the end of the day, it, it feels very personal, but it's not, it's about, it's more about it's them. It's, it's, you know, their how they feel about their own relationships, their own choices, um, their own sometimes lack of choices or, or at least making them. And it's, it's, it's really challenging. I think a lot of the time to, navigate that um and and i do think it's much harder for women than than for men um because i think again to your point like i think women just tend to be more relationship driven um than men are and so there there are some there are some real losses that are part of divorce that 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 extend way beyond the actual um end of a marriage now you know we um now there there's definitely it's all across the, the the board uh, I see a lot of women that, like, really, once we get through the process, um, they come off a lot of medication that they may have been mm. on to cope. However, yep. I think, obviously, there are other women who really have a hard time, and maybe they need that extra help and support. Now, yep. does Connecticut have any specific services um, or anything that really is specific to, you know, any mental health struggles Yeah, anybody during divorce? So I wouldn't say that, I wouldn't say that Connecticut has any, I wouldn't say that it's specific to that necessarily, but what we do have in Connecticut is a very, and, I, and you do in Florida as well, we have a very robust collaborative divorce mm-hmm. um, community in Connecticut. And 
and part of collaborative divorce are mental health professionals. And so there are this just sort of network of mental health professionals who are very, 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 very versed in working with um, families for the divorce, whether it's, you know, the actual, the, the, the adults and also with children. Um, and we have, we, we uh, probably about a third of our practice is actual collaborative divorce, but we endeavor to bring those professionals in to all of our divorces, you know, to varying degrees of success. Not people aren't always open to that, um, but they're the there is a there's they're very good at just you know it's you don't want to tell people like it's that it's that they're they're that divorce is wrote and everybody's you know it's every divorce is the same and you don't want, people yeah. don't want they want to know that you know what you're doing but they don't want to feel like you don't you don't got me um, right but the the reality is with these mental health professionals that do collaborative divorce they know what's coming for their for their clients. And so we we try to introduce the concept of not just mental health professionals, but these particular mental health professionals who day in day out work with couples who are in families who are going through divorce. Um, so while I, I wouldn't say it's it's specific in Connecticut, um, in in it, you know, working with um, people going through divorce, we just try to take advantage of the um, the network of people that do exist who work in the collaborative field and sort of bring them into um, even litigated divorces, and 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 also including help us like draft our agreements. That's a lot. Yeah, that makes so much sense. See, so we, um, there, Florida just, I think it's more by jurisdiction. Um, so mm -hmm. locally, jurisdictions do require parenting classes. Um, yeah. But it's just like a one class. Um, mm -hmm. It's just two. Um, and, and it's, you know, they say it's not terrible. It, you know, obviously it's not really personalized, but yeah. we certainly, you know, to touch on what you said that, you know, hey, therapy's great. Therapy's great. Yeah. Therapy. That was going to help you without a doubt. Yep. But, you know, there are so many therapists that specifically do deal with right. either families, the individuals, or children, but yeah. in the family law practice, like understanding, yeah. like you said, what potentially is coming, like what mm -hmm. best can really go a long way yeah. in helping the individuals yep. deal through that and even maybe repairing relationships with children mm -hmm. um, and their parents during this process. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And, you know, and like I said, it's not, you know, it's, it's, it's sort of like navigating the, navigating the lines between your, your divorce and your family are, are specific to you and with all the nuances that, that exist from family to family and person to person. But then at the same time, there are still themes, right? There are still things that are very, common things that we see when people are going through divorces, things that, that are common, how people, in terms of how people feel, um, sort of problems that might arise or, or, or unforeseen to them, um, circumstances that people who are work in a, you know, day in and day out with people going through what you're going through, even, even, even though yours isn't exactly the same, it's still going to be, have a lot, enough similarities that you can, to your point, like, here's what's coming here. Here are some things that you may not be feeling now, but in my experience, you might be feeling down the road and let's get ahead of it and, and be willing to talk about it. Yeah. I, and I think that that made me think of, of something very specific because, you know, the, all these feelings and the, the sadness and the guilt and shame, but then anger, um, mm -hmm. you know, they can feel in the beginning, but then they come up and most likely yeah. later, when they really rise up again is when there are new significant others brought in right. to the mix. Yeah. Um, and sometimes, you know, they're brought in much earlier than um, mm -hmm. would be advisable. But I know, like, you know, especially with therapists, because as lawyers, I mean, I tell them all the time, I'm telling you, I'm talking to you from your legal advantage. Right. You've got to talk to your therapist. Yeah, that's right. You know, I've got a lot of experience, but when we're talking about your case, I, you know, have that lens. But, um, you know, many times there is the importance of like the mental health people and things because you're amicable and you're like, well, no, we're just going to all get together every Christmas day. And, um, mm -hmm. you know, with the kids, and I've yeah. talked to people about that. And I'm like, okay, like, Maybe you just don't want that in writing because what <laughs> yeah. if the next year yeah. he shows up with his new wife and new baby on Christmas Day? Are you going to feel the same way right. with your children? Right. And like a whole new family. 
And yep. I'm pretty sure it is new why it is going to feel the same way. Right. And yep. Like you just don't know what you don't know. And right. trying to use from both sides saying, is that really going to be healthy for you? Yep. Even though you want and your to- and your kids. Yeah. You know, I, you know, and that's for every different couple's answer, but I think it's one of those mm-hmm. things that sometimes, especially I think women, they'll, they'll make all these decisions because they're putting everybody in front of them. Yeah, right. Um, and then, no, and then they are really angry because they, yeah, right. they, they're yeah. at the bottom of the pile. Yeah, and right. still not working. And I think, I, I think, I think you raise a really good point because I think so much of this the work that we do and this, this practice is having the courage to ask questions like that, right? It's, I mean, ha- uncomfortable questions. And even when things are amicable and, and, y- you know, which is, we, that's a good time to be making decisions. Um, but at the same time, like to your point, let's think ahead. Like it's, 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 I think it's our jobs to, to stand for not just the person in, that's in front of us right at, at present, but that that same that same person a year from now, five years from now, ten years from now, I think it's it's our our absolute responsibility to stand for those future versions of our clients and ask them to consider things that they that are uncomfortable that they aren't going to naturally consider in the moment, so that we can be willing to have difficult conversations um, rather than like you know being Pollyanna about it when it's yeah I'm sure I'll be fine with that when you know when we know I think you might not be. Right, right. And there there would be reasons not to or yeah. to say you're always and, and you know, and like we said, obviously we see the cases that go right. awry. Yeah. And then they're like, I agreed to always spend Christmas Eve with my in laws and now this is not what I want to do. Kids, right. right. But then I don't right. want the kids to have to go there, like they're supposed to be with me, like things yeah. like that. You know, we see them when and badly, but I think that is our job as well to raise that issue because yeah. they might be still in this. I feel so guilty. Like the parents yep. always been good to us, and I don't want to, you know, I, I want I don't want to make anybody mad. But yeah, right. or I feel so guilty. Right. But yep. then you're setting yourself up for just more grief down the road. Yep. Um, yep. And a lot of times, you can't really talk people out of that. You know, we try really hard on those things um i'm like it's like you can do it why have it in writing in court right right requires you to do something that will be difficult you know to to change later on because feelings change right and that your future self that you can't maybe see right now but i can Mm -hmm. isn't going to want that right exactly exactly well this is a perfect time for another break and when we come back with Kristen, we're going to talk about that future self and, and really how do you move on and what's ahead for you in the future. Thank you so much for joining us again. We are uh, still talking about shame and guilt um, in a divorce and those feelings. And as we move to the last segment of the show, we're going to talk about how to overcome these feelings and really moving mm-hmm. on. And you know, I talk a lot about not being a victim, and I know you mm-hmm. do too. We do because being a victim really does nothing to help you move forward. Mm-hmm. Um, and you know, it it's challenging in our role yeah. as their advocate, but also to help them maybe see mm-hmm. that there's another way to view things. And I don't know. Right. You know, how do you do you see your clients get stuck in that victimhood oh yeah i mean de- like day in day out um and i think it's it to your point it's not easy but it, these are this this is sort of our constant ongoing conversation both with our clients and and internally uh with our team and it's i think it's important to help people see the distinction between um being victimized like it's true that something can happen to you um that you didn't deserve right that can be true, but that at the, what can also be true at the same time is that you are not a victim. And, and that so often is like a very foreign concept for people. Um, but we, we spent a lot of time talking about the, um, the TED dynamic and the two triangles. 
And over in one triangle is the victim and over in the other triangle is the creator. And we are constantly talking, using that language with our clients and, and trying to get them to a place where they see themselves as creators, because when they're thinking that way, it's powerful, it's empowering. Whereas when they're, when they're in victim mindset, it's very difficult for them to make decisions. It's very difficult for them to see a way forward. It's very difficult for them to let go of the guilt, the shame, the things that are really just the diminishing beliefs um, that that keep them stuck and and unable to see a future. Um, never mind, move towards it. So that this, I, I would say, probably the the most frequent um, conversations in our both again in our firm and then outwardly with our clients is about this. And, you know, sometimes I think that it's, like you said, it, it's, you know, how can we, because we are in a unique position mm -hmm. of trust and authority yeah. with our clients, and we're able to see it because we're on the outside looking in, and we, yeah. you know, can do that to help them move forward right. and try to begin to change their view on their circumstance, mm -hmm. um, which I think was Part of probably why you guys, why you said in the firm, you talk about, you know, 100% responsibility yeah. for yourself, not for yourself, for everything, right. not for the relationship, because you're not no. responsible for the whole relationship. Yeah, right. You're 100% you're responsible for your part of the relationship, and they're responsible for 100% of their part. And, and that's sort of a foreign concept, too, because we think of 100% as a whole. But, but from our perspective, each person is a whole. And that's, that's what we mean when we say you're hundred percent, not that, that it's all on you, but that, that you are in charge of you. And, and that includes not it includes how you act for sure, but it also includes how you react. And, and, and I, it's, you know, so often this, this, even, even people that choose it or, or, or actually like make the decision that we're going, I want a divorce. That doesn't mean that they chose everything leading up to it. Right. Um, and, and in fact, they pretty much never did. So there's just, there's always this mix of feeling um, in, in control and then not in control. And the more that we can get back to decision-making and choices and empowerment, um, the, the, the more that we're really moving forward rather than just staying stuck in, a, in it, you know, not just in the present, but worse, the past. Yeah, I think that the past and, yeah. you know, um, it, it doesn't, yeah, it really doesn't help you move forward, but then also you can begin to romanticize yeah. the past, you know, in a way that plays into this story that's not going to let you move on, right? Right. Because either now I'm just going to beat myself up and I, you know, I'm still such a bad person because it was so mm -hmm. wonderful or, you know, just dwelling on that. And, um, and really, I think part of that moving in responsibility to also being able to forgive yourself as well as mm -hmm. others. Yeah. I mean, I think that comes first, really. I think that that, you know, it, it's sort of a like a lifelong um, challenge and I think a lifelong work in progress, the, the, the ability to forgive yourself. And I don't think anything really, I don't think anything real can happen before you do that. Um, I, I, I don't, I don't think there's really, for me, I don't believe that there's a true way forward into, you know, your full, your full self, the life that you're meant to live, uh, unless and until you, you develop the skill to forgive yourself. Uh, I just, I just don't, I, I think that has to come first. Yeah. And I think that, you know, many times we treat ourselves the worst, like we talked about earlier, yeah. because we put everybody else first, but right. You know, if you we talk to ourselves sometimes in a way, think about ourselves in a way that we would never talk yeah. or think about our best friend yeah. or, you know, our sister or mother, you know, where, where you want to give compassion mm -hmm. to yourself. And I think that at the end of the day with, you know, when you're going through a divorce, being able to forgive yourself, yeah. because we're all human, right? We all have shortcomings yep. and it's just, yep. you didn't, you weren't perfect in this marriage. Um, yeah. Neither I, were they, right? Right. And, you know, it, I, I think that so often women are sort of it, it, it just infected with this notion that um, making choices for themselves or, or you know, whether it's like forgiving themselves or just choosing, like, I, I want to move on to something more that that those decisions are selfish. 
And I, I think that that's, I, you know, I think that too is kind of a fundamental difference between men and women often that, that women sort of have this limiting belief that when they choose things for themselves, it's selfish instead of just deciding when I, when I choose things for myself, so that, that I become uh, the, the most actualized version of myself, then I'm here for all these other people that I care about. And when I don't do that, then I'm a lesser version of myself. Yes, for me, but for all of these other, my kids, all my community, my, my career, whatever the case may be. And I think that that's just, it's kind of the world that we've, that we've, you know, that our moms were raised in that, that, that in many cases we were raised in. And it takes courage to just decide that's how right. I'm going to show up for the people that need me by choosing myself first and taking care of myself first so that I'm whole and present and able to um, be there for the people that I care about. Yeah, I think that is such a great distinction. And, you know, sometimes I think that I, I know in my experience in, in talking with so many women over the years, I found that they said, you know, we actually we are both such better people when we were not, when we're not together. Like yeah. we, we didn't bring out the best in each other. And so right. therefore when we are separate, we really actually were able to be better humans and yeah. better parents because yep. something happened. And we, and I think that can ha that does totally happen. And mm -hmm. it happens over time or at first maybe yep. it seems like, you don't realize it, but you then you recognize that that is not bringing the best. You're not bringing your best when you're with this person for whatever right. that may be. And that shows up everywhere. And there's just, you know, when you're living that way, you're, you're the, that's how the, that's how the universe is, is, is showing up for you as well. And it's not just, so it's never just one thing, right? If the, if, if that's, if that, if that's what's happening in your relationship, it's, it's showing up everywhere else in your life. Even if, you know, people don't always see that or maybe want to acknowledge it but it's just a fact and and when you make a decision to um to to move on from that to decide that i want more from my life the universe opens itself up to you in ways that you can't even see and sometimes it's things that were there the whole time that you literally couldn't see because of the way that you were that you were living and it's that 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 really that's kind of back to the transformation piece that i mentioned earlier that's the most rewarding part of this this work when, when you, you see that happen, like the, the, the little steps forward and then something else shows up for them. Um, and then little steps forward and then something else. And it's again, so often it was there the whole time, but when we're living that way, when we're living in this diminished way, we just don't see possibility out in the universe. When, when, when I know, and I know you believe this too, Heather, that there's nothing but possibility out in the world. Yeah, I know. I think that, you know, when, when we can continue to help women See this because I do. Th I think I think women, um, you know, suffer from this more than men, right? Yeah. I, I just do in the relationship aspect, and and it really is what is your identity. But you know, yeah. your identity is being married, and it it, it it it's it's a little bit harder. But yeah, I, I I only represent women, but I can speak from all that experience that it really does take a lot of courage to make that step and then move on from mm -hmm. the feeling that yeah do nothing to help you yep. as far as the guilt and shame and then yeah. be a better version of yourself. And you know, hey, not yeah. everybody does, right? Sometimes they just get divorced and they go off and they're of no benefit to anyone yeah. else. But right. they had a choice. <laughs> yeah, it's but a they choice. Had a choice yeah. to be. Yeah. And you know, I think that most most women and, and you know, I'm fortunate um, having been doing this for so long now that I, I still see clients, you know, like 10, 15 years ago and um, even 20 and they're so happy, mm -hmm. right? Like they're like, my life is so different now. Yeah. And that's just so rewarding because that's what we want. I think for, for all people is that yeah. they find a better way than yep. they did. And, you know, I, I know focusing on the future certainly helps that and helps you get away from getting stuck. But mm -hmm. lastly, Kristen, before we go, um, I would love if you could tell our listeners and myself you know, what you've learned about divorce and representing women throughout your career. Um, I think that, I think I said this earlier, I just, that, that women are, have been and still are holding up the world. And if they, if, if, if they, if we 
could get out of our own way, we could also rule it. And I, I mean, that sounds like maybe a little cliche, but it's just, they're, they're holding up the whole world. And I think sometimes they get caught up in like, I'm not doing, I'm, I'm, I'm doing all of these things and I'm not, I'm, I'm failing in little ways at all of them instead of seeing it for what it is that you're, that they're, that they're, they're just heroic, right? They're just heroic. No one ever, no one ever told men that they were selfish for choosing themselves. And that's what the world has told, particularly in the, the world where we live, um, has told women that. And so the courage, the courage that it takes to make a decision to choose something more, I think when, when women do that, I think there's just nothing more powerful, um, in, in nothing. And that's, it, you know, I like representing men too. I, I especially like representing men who are just like really care about being good dads. But at the end of the day, the transformations, like the ones that, that just like, that we talk about, that we're like, oh, that, you know, like, like to your point, when you hear from them and they're like, they can't believe whatever's happening, maybe it's a new relationship or something happened in their career, or their kids are just like doing so well, or they're just like, there's not even anything specific. They're just happy. It's so rewarding um, to hear that particularly from, um, from women. Oh, well, thank you so much, Kristen. We have reached the end of our show. And it's been such a pleasure to see you and have you as a guest on this today. <laughs> it um, has been my pleasure being here. Oh, well, thank you so much. And for all our listeners, you can find out more about Kristen and Freed Marcroft Law Firm at FreedMarkcroft.com. And in our show notes, we will have links to their site as well. Thank you so much. Thank you, Heather. Thank you for joining me for this episode of Women Winning Divorce. If you or someone you know is looking for answers regarding divorce, reach out to us at floridawomenslawgroup.com and also join the conversation on social at Women Winning Divorce. Women Winning Divorce is the place for an elevated conversation on how women can thrive during times of adversity in order to live their best life.